Ah, the good old Defender. Well, it's reached the end of the road now. There's sure to be those that shed a tear or two, but others have long since been cured of the Landy myth. The vehicle polarises, just like its brand new successor probably will too. We've also done a test drive and reported on the new vehicle here. This old one, however, is a swan song of royal proportions, because what Olive Booking has achieved with the open range Defender is absolutely insane. But before we dive into the depths of the vehicle, let's do a few more laps. With an increase in power from 122 to 150 HP and a curb weight of almost 2.8 tonnes, the Landy moves along pretty well. A lot has been modified on this Defender. Naturally, the chassis has been given a new lease of life. O-RAM shock absorbers have been fitted with an external reservoir. It's very well balanced. I can drive at a pretty good speed too. No trouble at all. Trouble-free off-road driving is a matter of honor for the Defender. Which is why we're going to devote ourselves to the conversion. It took a solid three years until the vehicle was ready for us to test. And that's not because the builder discovered a slower pace of life, but much more because of the attention to detail and first-class craftsmanship. You probably don't need to waste too many words on the Defender, but instead look at what Olaf Böcking has turned it into. Since test driving this vehicle, I've come to think of the man from Antrek as the flap man. Ready for a grand tour? Let's start on the driver's side. Flap 1, the power center is concealed behind here. Main switch, connection point for jump starts, compressed air connection. Flap number 2, you can probably guess what's behind this one. First aid kit, car jack, fire extinguisher. Everything's easily accessible. Right underneath here is an electric compartment where, for example, you can charge your camera equipment while you're on the road. Third flap, here at the rear, the fuel storage compartment, oil for the engine, fuel for the stove. And as an example of the quality of the workmanship, this flap here has been machined from one piece. But that's not all that folds out. There's also a holder for the sand ladders and room for a shovel behind it. And two solar modules with a long cable, which means I can connect them to the electricity socket at the front. Und genauso klappend, nicht klappernd, geht es auf der Beifahrerseite weiter. There's even more surprises around the corner on the passenger side. There's the same sand ladder holder, which creates a nice workspace. It's a bit high for cooking. I'd be up there somewhere, but it covers over the window. Click, and it's disappeared again. And here behind the rear flap is the access point for the water system. Underneath here is the pump for the pressurized water. I really like this nice bayonet tank lock. I use it to fill up the water tank as it's located right underneath. Of course, for full disclosure, there's also one more flap. However, almost everything underneath has been left in its original state. This would normally be 122 HP, but here it's 150 and that really gets you moving. But the most important flap is up there. The pop-up roof is a work of art in itself. Two pneumatic cylinders make light work of the first 30 centimeters, meaning that putting it up doesn't become a feat of strength. By the way, the whole roof is an in-house construction and has nothing to do with the original. Although an interior conversion based on aluminium isn't a new concept for Land Rover fans, what Olaf Böcking from Antrek has managed to deliver is really a whole different class. It's an unbelievably complex conversion. Here are a few small details. Already at first glance it's obvious that the internal fit-out is an eye-catcher and anyone with any knowledge about metalwork will immediately recognize the high standards of the workmanship. All the edges have been rounded and there's even a shadow gap here right at the floor. Each compartment has its own compression fastener, its own seal, its own lighting. 
and the teak deck naturally is just the crowning glory. Of course, all this comes at a price. These fittings here alone cost 20,000 euros. Here at the rear door is the kitchen unit, or at least the workspace for it. There's a very nice stainless steel panel here and space for the necessities to the right and the left. There are a total of 20 closable compartments here, including the glove box. Some of them are large compartments, like the one here under the seating bench, where you can put a cushion on top, of course. This is the perfect space for sleeping bags or clothes. The bedding can stay where it is in the pop-up roof. Larger compartments like here, for example, can hold lots of stores. The cool box is a little bit smaller. It's got a volume of 16 liters and has been installed on top of a drawer. There are also smaller compartments here at the top and drawers and it's so perfect for organizing everything that I know straight away that I forgot my measuring tool here. The electrics are also to a very high standard. You can see this not only on the nice design of the operating unit, but it's also been designed to be so easy to use that I can operate the lights from here or from the driver's cab. The operating element for the diesel heater is located above and a battery monitor with a remote controlled main switch. There are a lot of sockets here underneath. Actually, there are quite a lot here distributed all over the vehicle and right at the bottom is then a country connector and a large 230 volt inverter with two sockets. The passageway to the front is wide enough and there is even more storage space available here. The only thing that hasn't turned up behind all these doors is a cooking area. You simply place the stove onto the shelf at the outside kitchen. However, there is a small tap here for water and a very shallow sink. Two clever details here on the pop-up roof are the pneumatic cylinders that help to lift up the roof the first little bit when it's fully loaded and the material here is always very well stretched. This ensures quiet nights. There's nothing worse than the flapping of a tent roof and the reason why it's so well stretched is based on a simple principle. Two rods like this have been fitted and you can notice that it's a bit looser now. I lift them into the corner and then the material is immediately taut. The pop-up roof up here is pretty standard. The mattress is 1 meter 18 by 2 meters. There's just about 15 centimeter space for your feet and I have 81 centimeters headroom here. At first glance, the mattress seems quite thin, but the slatted frame supplied by Fanella is very effective. It's really comfortable to lie on. There's a skylight by Vitis above me. It's a classic yacht skylight. It allows me to climb out, take a photo or clean the solar cells. The pop-up roof has a darkening screen fitted to the outside. It's fixed in place simply with press dots and can be closed with very nice strong zips. There is also a mosquito net and it's also removable, which means I can also have a completely open space here or replace the mosquito net if it starts to get worn over the course of time. The bed is simply fixed to the roof during the day. Here there is no support from the gas springs to put it away. You do have to push quite forcefully. The plan for the next version is to make it a bit easier, but you do still have enough headroom here in the majority of the cabin to allow you to move around well. Of course there is very limited space available overall in the Defender, which makes everything Entrek has come up with here all the more amazing. So for all those who don't know the Land Rover Defender very well and only have vague pleasant memories of it from Daktari, this vehicle really only appears to be a giant. The Defender might be big and bulky on the outside, but it's really quite small and cramped on the inside. There's actually no spare room here to put my elbow as the side window is right there and the brake pedal is located where I'd assume the clutch pedal would be. I have to move my left foot right to the very edge before I find the clutch pedal. Everything is pretty tight, there's not a lot of space above my head, so don't be fooled by the outward appearances. That means that the age of the vehicle really does play a role, at least when it comes to current expectations of comfort. On the other hand, the Entrek conversion is new and it's great and definitely worth a line or two. However, it's not a cheap option. 
You'll have to dig deep into your pockets for a minimum of 150,000 euros if you want to have a vehicle like the one we are driving now. That's naturally a lot of money for an old off-roader with a bed and a pop-up roof. But the quality of the workmanship is really extraordinary. It's not often you see so much well thought through work in such a small space. The pop-up roof was the biggest part of this conversion and has really been done well. In my opinion the bed is a bit too heavy. A little bit more support wouldn't hurt when it comes to fixing it to the roof during the day. Other manufacturers have solved this better. But the workmanship as well as the stability when you're driving off-road is exceptionally good. Anyone enthusiastic about this conversion can get in on the action from a starting price of 60,000 euros. Obviously it could be done more cheaply, but insanely good insanity does have its price.